do this wrong. I have done this wrong. I have made a whole bunch of mistakes in the process. So my first advice is that, yeah, it's going to be an experiment and you don't have to hit it perfectly that first time. That first time that I started blending, um, my students let me know rather vocally in their evaluations and somewhat through the course that I was just adding more work for them, that I was making it easier for me to teach in a large classroom session, but all these online journal entries felt for some of them to be busy work. And I realized if I'm going to add or, or blend in that way, I need to subtract something else somewhere else. So it's important to keep the entire class from the student's perspective in mind. Um, the other thing that I learned when I said yes to doing an online blended course, I said yes sort of enthusiastically and then realized this is a lot of work. Creating online videos of your lectures is not so simple as simply standing up and recording what you do um, traditionally in a in a face-to-face -face classroom. When you stand up and give that traditional lecture, you have a lot of tangents. You have a lot of pauses. You fumble around a lot with your words. And you engage with the students. Uh, you see their excitement, and you sort of follow that excitement. You see their confusion, and you backtrack a little bit. Uh, perhaps you throw out a question and engage their, their learning sort of on the fly. That's all gone with these online videos. And so it's a very scripted um, and somewhat laborious process to create these online videos. Um, I took my traditional lectures. I wrote out my script for myself. I practiced it. I then recorded it, and then I edited it. It was a lot of work to create those online videos. I loved what they were able to do for the classroom time and what possibilities they opened up for me and my students later on in uh, the classroom. But that first time you do it, you plan on it being a lot of work. I'm going to teach the same course again this summer. I think it's going to be way, way easier that second time through, but don't underestimate. Uh, the, the learning curve and the amount of time it takes that first time through. When I started blending, it was somewhat ironic that I was doing it in this course that was a discussion course and a course about sustainability, about uh, interacting with your natural environment, interacting with community, um, questioning materialism. It was so strange to cover that content in uh, a way that used all of these online um, and technological facets. And at the same time, I was also a little bit resistant to the idea of using this approach with this particular subject matter because I thought, okay, doing a flipped classroom, doing a blended classroom in a math class, that makes such sense. In a skills-based course, Flipping seems so logical. Yes, lectures, have them watch that online. Classroom time, spend problem solving. That makes a lot of sense. I was less sure that it worked for a course that was based on this idea of discussion and community. And so I was quite surprised in the end how much I enjoyed the online community and that that online discussion wound up being stronger um, and the community building being stronger than it was in a traditional classroom even. So based on that, my sense of blending, uh, of blended classrooms as a tool has expanded from sort of a limited set of university courses to a much wider set. There are some things that I don't think work with blending. There's some things that I don't think work with online. But there's quite a bit that I think could benefit from playing with the tools and the technologies and just experimenting with your own style, with the technologies, with the students to figure out uh, where can we learn the most, where can we be engaged in this material the most.